All right, YouTube, so Ford had a press conference a couple days ago uh, releasing their next generation 2021 F-150. I had uh, uploaded a edited version of that press conference just to kind of show you the uh, important key parts of the release. Since then, I've taken a lot of notes, looked at a lot of images, tried to break some stuff down online, and I have notes on the interior, the exterior, uh, some of the engines and the uh, new power boost uh, hybrid as well as some of the safety hands-free features uh, these aren't going to be in any particular order uh, i guess i'll try to start with the interior first and then we're going to go from the stuff that we do know that's confirmed based on the reveal and some of the pictures to stuff we don't really know about and most of that's going to be uh, engine options so Starting off, we're going to go with the interior. It looks like the um, full digital dashboard is going to be available on the Lariat and Up trims. Now, just based on all of the uh, pictures I've seen online and from what I have saw on the uh, press conference, it seemed like every single digital dashboard uh, speedometer, tachometer, all that was on a Lariat or Up truck. It looks like you will be able to get the 12 inch touchscreen on the XLT and above trims. With that touchscreen, they introduced uh, over the air updates. So uh, that pretty much means you won't have to take your vehicle in to a Ford dealer to get it updated. Uh, and also through the Ford My Pass app, you can also schedule updates. So that way, in the morning when you're going to work, you get in the car and it says you need to update so you don't have access to your touchscreen, which you know kind of stinks. So uh, fortunately, Ford had uh, thought about that and you can now schedule updates to install overnight, which is really cool. This new uh, sync system is gonna be the Sync 4 system. It looks very similar to the current system However, I feel like it's going to be a little bit more connected in the press conference. Um, they talked about the connectivity and uh, how this Sync 4 system is going to be the best yet. Uh, it looks very similar, like I said. However, it's probably going to be a little bit better in terms of responsiveness and user interface. The, uh, if you get the uh, 40 console 40 setup, you will have the option to get the fold down shifter, which is pretty cool. Uh, you push a button in front of the uh, <clears throat> park button and the shifter will actually fold into the console portion, giving you access to a uh, flat surface. At that point, you can then pull down the center console armrest to either make a table or a uh, laptop desk, which is really cool. So if you need to work on the computer at the job site, or you're just hungry and need to eat on break, you can uh, have a table or a laptop desk, which is pretty sweet. Uh, this also has a wireless CarPlay with Sync 4, and it looks like the steering wheel is actually very similar to the current uh, Ford Explorer and then the next generation Ford Escape. It looks like they are trying to make um, these parts as interchangeable as possible, and depending on your trim level, uh, you get different uh, Ford logos. I think on the King Ranch or the Platinum, you get kind of a brushed logo. Uh, I think on one of the Sport steering wheels, I saw a black Ford logo. So it is pretty cool that with different uh, trims and packages, you get different color logos. Uh, you can also control the light zones from the uh, touchscreen display. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work when you're driving, but from the video, it looked like he could turn on and off the headlights using the touchscreen, and he can also turn on and off the spotter mirrors as well as the backup lights from the touchscreen. So uh, very cool. Who knows what the aftermarket will hold. That'd be pretty sweet if you had some LED pods you can control from the touchscreen display. Uh, you also have bigger lockable storage in the under seats uh, of the rear. I think this is only available on the uh, the crew or the four full door model, um, the extended cab or the suicide doors. I don't know if those are going to come with the lockable storage. And then go, getting back to the sync four system and the touchscreen, uh, you can have up to 10 devices connected 
and uh, this vehicle does have uh, 4G LTE. So lots of cool tech features. Um, some of the safety features also double as tech features. I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. But moving to the exterior, during the press conference, they said there's gonna be 13 wheel options. Um, I think you're probably gonna have two option, two wheel options, maybe three for the uh, Limited, the Platinum and the King Ranch. Probably have two options for the Lariat, uh, a couple options for the XLT. And then the XL work truck is gonna be obviously one. And then if you get the STX package, which, which looks like it's making a return, you'll probably get those 20 inch uh, wheels as well. There's also 11 grills. Uh, XL is gonna be the black grill. XL, XLT or XL with the STS X package. Looks like it's gonna have that honeycomb style grill. You're gonna have the XLT grill, the XLT sport grill, Lariat grill, Lariat sport grill. And then I think you'll probably just have uh, one grill uh, for the King Ranch, Lariat, and Platinum. Now, something to note too is they did not go over any of the next generation Raptor stuff in this video. So these grill and wheel options may include those, they may not. Based on some pictures and some video, it looks like there are going to be different types of LED headlights. Uh, the ones on the XLT and the Lariat look to be uh, uh, one LED for the highs, one LED for the lows, and then the upper trim LEDs look like the current generation of RAM where they have four little pod lights for the highs and the lows. Looks very cool. Um, all of them will have the C channel in them from XLT and up. I believe, again, those are going to be uh, an option for the XLT and the Lariat, and then they should be standard on King Ranch and up. The tailgate work surface, uh, in the video they kind of displayed that you can put your clamps on there, you can have a, uh, uh, a saw on there, uh, there's spots for tie downs to hook right into the tailgate so if you need to hold something securely you can, very cool. Uh, there's also the new uh, deployable running boards. They come down a little bit lower than the current generation. They also extend back towards the bed. Uh, I think that's a similar feature that GM has. Moving back to the uh, tailgate, however, it looks like it's gonna be power up and down and you can control it from the key fob. Now, currently with Ford's uh, setup, uh, I think it's power down and it's assisted, but it is not power up. Uh, Chevy and General Motors have a power up assist so if you raise the tailgate up a little bit, it'll take it the rest of the way. And it looks like based on the video, uh, it will be able to fully go up by itself with a button in the cab and a button on the key fob. So very cool. Uh, again, based on the pictures I saw, it looks like the XLT Sport model will be returning. The STX model will be returning. And there was a blackout edition. I don't know if it was the XLT or the Lariat, just because now you can get LED headlights on the XLT. So I'm not 100% sure. I know Ram has the blackout of the midnight edition, and I think uh, Chevy has like the black redline edition or something like that. So it would make sense for Ford to release a blackout edition. Coming over to the power that we know of, there are going to be six engines for this vehicle. Uh, 5.0 more than likely going to be returning. 2.7 EcoBoost returning. 3.5 EcoBoost returning. 3.0 diesel returning. I don't know if they're calling this new Power Boost an engine option, uh, but the Power Boost will be available. And then I don't know if they're going to be sticking around with their naturally aspirated what is it like three three or it's like it's a v6 it's, it's very rarely chosen uh, i don't i don't know if that one is going to be returning or if they're counting the high output 3.5 liter in that um, engine that's returning also 10 speed transmissions across the board and then getting to that power boost so the power boost engine is going to be a 3.5 fully hybrid engine it's going to have 12,000 uh, pounds towing capacity 7.2 kilowatt hour 
power. They're calling that the Pro Power Onboard, and it's essentially a generator. Uh, in the video, they showed you all the tools and stuff you can plug into it. Very, very cool. Uh, that's gonna be a very cool feature. And then they're also saying up to 700 miles of range with the Power Boost engine option. Now, this vehicle obviously just being unveiled right now, they aren't gonna release any uh, MPG or power on it yet. Expect that in the near future. What else did I have on that? Um, but yeah, so getting to the tech now, as we get more and more advanced to technology, um, autonomous driving is becoming more and more mainstream. They went over hands-free driving. Uh, and it's not like the Tesla system where you have to have a hand on the wheel. There's actually cameras or monitors or sensors in the vehicle that detect if you're looking at the road or not. So this isn't gonna be one of those scenarios where you can just text and watch a video while the vehicle does all the driving. Uh, it will slow down and almost come to a stop if it detects you're not paying attention. You always need to be ready to take over at a moment's notice. They said that they have uh, intersection assist as well as left turn assist, which is pretty cool. I guess we'll have to see how all these things work out, but lots of cool features. Uh, again, 4G LTE connected, 360 degree camera system. These vehicles are more computer than they are engine at this point. There's just so much technology in here. And of course you're gonna have the blind spot monitoring as well. Now, coming to the things that we don't know, uh, we do know that there are gonna be uh, six engine options as well as the 10 speed transmissions what we don't know uh, is specific horsepower and fuel economy of uh, all of these engines in the press conference they did say that the f-150 will be class leading in terms of horsepower torque payload and towing uh, again probably range as well just with that power boost hybrid option to go against the uh, Ram eTorque system, but we just don't know. I think just based on sales figures, if you look, the number one engine is the 2.7 EcoBoost, and then the 5.0, and then the 3.5. I think they probably will beef up horsepower and torque for the 2.7 and the 3.5. Uh, the 5.0 has been around forever and they haven't really made any substantial gains in terms of updating horsepower or torque on that. And in my opinion, Ford is trying to move people towards small displacement uh, turbocharged engines. I don't see the uh, the 5.0 uh, lasting much longer, in all honesty. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, I know the, uh, what is it, Power Stroke 3.0 diesel may get some updates, uh, but again, with the EcoBoost, you're looking at almost the same performance and torque numbers out of those engines. So. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, realistically, I'm hoping this vehicle can get high 20s on the on the freeway. The hybrid will probably be there, maybe even low 30s. It all just depends. Uh, also, if they uh, save some weight, I know going to the aluminum body back in, what was it, 2015, it saved a substantial amount of weight. So if they can cut weight out of these vehicles, obviously that will improve the payload towing and the uh, fuel economy as well. Just very excited overall on all of these new updated trims. Again, I have the pictures in the video so you can see. I'm very excited for the STX as well as the Lariat Sports. Um, and then as soon as these hit dealer lots, I will be trying my hardest to get to the lot to actually do videos on them. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and share. Like always, thanks for watching and have a great day.